see the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Tuesday, June 4th, 2024, and this is episode 712 of the Lots Project podcast, and it's titled, What Do You Know About Eels? I'll be chatting about eels, the link between Rigid and Milwaukee Tools, lots more babies on the way, and much more. First, let's check out in the live crew, live chat, see who's hanging out in the coffee crew, grab a cup and hang out for about an hour. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, how's how's everyone doing? Let's see who's hanging out early already. Pip in early. I don't know much about eels, but I can tell you a few things about leeches. Ooh, AKA UAW workers. Uh-oh, Pip. Those union thugs are going to be after you. Watch them kneecaps. Watch them tires. Good morning, Jim. Jim says we watched a movie or show that had people poaching and hoarding all the eels. Like salmon, they return to where they hatch, but I don't know much. Do tell. Um, I have a I have some uh, some facts about eels and some some mysteries about eels that have been fascinating me for uh, for a while here and uh, looked into them and thought I would share them with you. Jim also says, does it involve how hard it is to carry eels up a hill? Now, that would be a show. I um, I have not attempted to carry an eel up the hill yet, but uh, if I can find one, maybe maybe that could be an adventure. I do feel as though it may be ha- hard to carry an eel up a hill without any assistance from a bucket or something like that. Good morning, K-Bonk and Chris Dixon. Good morning to you. How's it going? Rewilder Life says they didn't do googly eyes, did they? Googly eyes. <laughs> Good morning, Mike's Homestead. Um, Backwoods Butcher, wondering if I'm if I'm if I'm there. God, it's me, Margaret. I don't know. Am I froze? Am I? Um, is there no sound? What do we got going on? Um, Hunter, good morning. Canadian Farmsteads on the road and um, Black Blackwoods Butchers talking. Are we talking glass eels? Um, dude, you're uh, I, you got me. Got me. I don't know. Uh, you got uh, you got a big event today at your place. Um, you got a big event at your place today. I think you, know, you got a couple of friends coming up to hang out or people that you want to be your friends. Um, Rewilder Life says the pic showed big, huge snail eyes on Sydney. Mm, oh, the thumbnail? No, the thumbnail today was uh, the thumbnail today was definitely an eel. Um, let me uh, let me pull it up here. I can put it on the screen. Um. That was uh, must be a, 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 a you saw it wrong you saw it wrong. Well, I'm finding that like what's in the cup this morning. Let's uh, talk about that. I got FTO blonde espresso in the cup this morning. It is fantastic. Uh, it's just a great middle of the road brew for anyone that likes light, dark, in between. I think you can put this in a cup. It's an all day drinker. Um, if you don't know what to get, I would definitely suggest this or Brian's blend. If you're just kind of going blind into um, into purchasing some coffee from Food Forest Farms, I think this um, I think this would be would be more than appropriate for anyone that was uh, was looking to try some coffee just off the off the shelf. If you don't want to take the time to talk to Brian uh, and figure out what is the best ideal fit for your coffee taste. But uh, yeah, FTO Blonde Espresso, you can pick that up at foodforestfarms.com. If you've never ordered from foodforestfarms.com, you can use LOTS10, L-O-T-S, the number 10, for 10% off, plus plus always free shipping and awesome customer service. If you've already used that LOTS10 and you want to give it a try again, use LOTS5 for 5% off every day, all day, all the time forever and ever and ever you can always get a discount using lots five at foodforestfarms.com go pick up some awesome coffee today and check out all the other cool stuff they got going on at foodforestfarms.com they got free music they got uh they got art they have all sorts of things so check it out uh rachel says uh, uh migraine must have messed with her eyes 
Here we go. Yeah, this is uh, this is definitely an eel. Got the got the thumbnail from today is up on the screen. Um, I think this is a moray eel. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Moray, moray. Um, that necess wasn't necessarily the one that uh, that I was most interested about, but it was the the funnest picture to put on the to put on the uh, thumbnail. Um, good morning, Pickle Pete. Thanks for thanks for pick <laughs> thanks for stopping in. Uh, and Backwood says, "Yes, sir. I've got two comics up to film content. Going to put a pig in the cooler and scare some city folks." Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, to be a fly on the wall at the at the at the ranch today at the backwards our ranch today that would be um that'd be fun that'd be fun or to be an assistant to be an uh uh be a uh an assistant backwards butcher says more is the right way to say it <laughs> thanks thanks i i'm taking um i'm taking pronunciation advice from kyle that's that's never good <laughs> <laughs> no chris i won't be singing this morning um uh, anyway <laughs> we can get we can get into it um nothing crazy about nothing crazy about eels really like i hope i didn't uh, get everybody's hopes up and 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 whatnot but uh cory the other day sent me a a tiktok it was about um <laughs> Backwood says, "When it comes to critters, you can trust me." I, I'm not saying that uh, if I was looking for someone to butcher an eel, that I wouldn't grab you. Um, just the 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 reading, writing, arithmetic. When it comes from uh, when it comes from Kyle, put me a little on edge for sure, for sure. But Corey sent me a TikTok the other day. She's always sending me interesting things. Um, mm, well across the board she she sends me she sends me show fodder or or what she feels that uh, i could use for show fodder uh she also sends me pictures of animals that are cute so that it gets me in the mood to, to allow her to probably acquire other and new pets and things uh, i don't think she wants to acquire eels um <laughs> Backwood says, I'm so excited for your camper to turn into a mobile aquarium. Um, when we move out, I mean, there there are definitely opportunities for things like that. But uh, at the moment, we are not getting eels, as I know, a, 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 at least as I know. Corey, you're not like trying to set me up to get eels, are you? What's that? Not yet. Not yet. That that yet is always in there. There's always a possibility. So, but anyway, she sent me one because it um, because it had some interesting facts about them. I've been kind of interested in them long uh, for quite a while. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I'm a little congested in my chest this morning. Um, I've been interested in them since we watched a show on. Um, might have been history channel one of one of those um weekly uh weekly jobs shows i think it was called filthy riches i don't know if you guys have seen it they uh, the one they go through they go through and they they document guys that are uh, guys and girls that are making money doing some odd and most mostly dirty um, what people would think of as dirty, um, not ordinary jobs. Uh, two of our favorite characters on there were um, two of those guys were um, harvesting sandworms in Maine. There were people foraging for mushrooms. There were, um, man, I can't think of all of them, but there were, there were two guys um, two guys that uh that captured and smoked eels out of the river um kyle says i see the road sign lots of critters in a camper 
Jesus. Uh, Jim says those Airbnbs have themes. The aquarium A frame could be a thing. I don't know. I don't. It's a lot of work to take care of. Um, to take care of. To take care of. Um, I'm I I am I I'm I don't know if I can go on here. Chris Dixon says how'd they roll them? Uh, and K Box says smoked. What the fuck? Um, they smoked them and sold them. They're they're down in uh, they're down right on the Hudson, I believe. K Bonk, um, north of the cities there in the Catskills. I think they they pull them out of uh, out of some of the rivers, and then they they hang them in a smokehouse and smoke them and sell them as uh, as pretty high end, I guess. But um, I always I got uh, I got interested in them. Then I watch I've watched documentaries, like Jim said earlier in the comments. Uh, documentaries about um, just about the animals because they're they're pretty they're pretty mysterious. Um, we don't know a whole hell of a lot about them, and that kind of sits right in my wheelhouse. Of um, there's some conspiracy theories about eels. There's uh, anytime there's a lot of questions and we don't know much about them. Um, it just uh, you don't know, you don't know, and people make shit up. And people go down tangents because you can't prove them wrong because they don't know. Pickle P says that was a great show. Oh, the filthy riches. Yeah, Pickle P says he filled the canoe with eels. Yeah, so the dude would go and uh, the guy would go and check his traps. And he would set these traps up in the river and he would go down. And if the traps were full, he's just dumping them in the canoe with him. And uh, they're all in the floor, and he's just like, oh, yeah, 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 these huge, uh, huge American eels. So, um, wow, Backwood, Backwoods is just a, a wealth of information this morning. Are you on? Are you on like Chat GPT or something? Did you did you find AI chat for the first time? Wow, that was interesting. Um, did you guys see that? Come. <laughs> Uh, Backwood says the U S and I, I haven't verified this. I haven't fact checked this. So, um, take it with a grain of salt. The U S is the number one producer of eel. We send almost all the eel to Japan. Interesting. Did like, where did you come up with that? I, I, like, are you, are, should I have had you on as a guest on the, for the eel show he says nope i just know things all right all right well that's cool um so there's a shitload of different species of eels today we're we're mainly talking about the the american and the european eels rachel was asking if uh she sent a a, a picture to the group of her daughter handling a lamprey eel and i i don't believe me mm, uh since i put this episode up I don't believe so, but um, I, I can't recall if I've seen that or not. Uh, Backwoods says I could have had him on. I do, just, like I don't know your specialties, man. I would I would have like gone to I would have gone to the Backwoods butcher to have somebody on as a guest about butchering pigs or cows or sheep or um, a variety of other other things. But I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been my go to uh, to 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 wrangle the backwoods butcher for a co-host on an eel show anyway anyway so we're talking american and uh, european eels for the the beginning here um oh rewild Lilith says no a week a week or two ago those are the the great lakes smaller but it's crazy they're uh, parasites on the fish Okay, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Are the are they anywhere near the electric eels? Because I was reading a little bit about them. <coughs> All right, more tips, more facts from the backwoods butcher. Again, I have not vetted this. He says most of most of them are farmed, but they are not bred in captivity. They have to be caught as glass eels, then sold for farms. Um, I'm going to talk about the breeding here. Uh, that is on my list. And that is, that is one of the mysteries. 
Chris Dixon says maybe I should do a different show and let Kyle have this one. All right, we're wrapping up on eels this week on Meet the Critters. Kyle and uh, Joe will be discussing eels. <laughs> um. <laughs> So anyway, um, one of the big things, one of the big things is the, is the, um, the reproduction. That's one of the mysteries of these eels. And that's, that's one thing that, um, that, that really makes me, um, it, it, it gets me, it gets me interested in, um, in these animals. So like the snails, one of the things that fascinated me about the snails was how they reproduce. Um, the snails, we as we know, are hermaphroditic. We've talked about this a couple times, um, but they cannot impregnate themselves. They need to they need to mate with another snail, um, and I think they can double do it. They can double dip at the same time, from what I understand. There, uh, there is no pitcher and catcher. They are both uh, switch hitters at the t- at the time. So then they can also um, store for later and, um, and 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 get with another snail in the meantime. So we've talked about this. Now, eels, on the other hand, we don't really know how they reproduce. Um. So what happens is when it's time for eels to mate, uh, both North American and um, and European eels all travel to the same spot. They travel out into what is called, and uh, I have it up here, and I, um, I was looking at maps, actually, um, the, the Sargasso Sea. The Sargasso Sea is uh, is where we believe their their breeding grounds are. Now, as I dove into the TikTok that Corey sent me the other day, um, the TikTok now the TikTok I think was meant to um, be like a ooh, conspiracy woo woo um, fodder, which it worked. It worked, <laughs> but they said. That all the, tr- the all the eels travel to the Bermuda Triangle. Now, I should probably try to get this up if I can uh, get this on here. Um, I want to I want to ask you guys. Now, let me see if I can find it. Um, so I asked I asked AI if. Um, if the Saragosso Sea, so the, the the TikTok said that all the eels go to the Bermuda Triangle to mate. Uh, we it, it's dangerous to um, study them when they mate. Uh, we haven't been able to have them mate in captivity. When we have them in captivity and it's time to mate, they all swim in the in the right in the direction of the Saragosso Sea, which I was curious if it's in the same. I have never heard of the Saragosso Sea. Um, Hunter says eel mating the Antarctic thing. No, no. Okay, so <laughs> so um, so I didn't. I had never heard of the Saragosso Sea, and I I knew that the eels came from North America and Europe and came into the Atlantic Ocean. So I asked, I asked ChatGPT, I asked Claude, I asked several, um, I asked several uh, AI um, chats, are the Saragossa Sea, and I might be saying that wrong, it's S-A-R-G-A-S-S-O, are the Saragosso Sea and the Bermuda Triangle in the same area? And, um, and they, 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 it was like, no, 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 it's not. So I'm going to bring this map up here. So this, this is going to be, how do I get it up here? I don't, know. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. So the Saragosso Sea is this big area um, kind of off the coast of, of North America, way off the coast of Europe and, and, and in, this, um, in this big region. 
And the AI bot said, nope, 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 nope. No way that that's the, that's the same as the, the Bermuda Triangle. Now, I have to stop this because I, I don't think I can share two at the same time. But, but hold on one second. I'm going to pull this other one up. Now, now this is the, this is the, um, the picture of where the Bermuda Triangle is. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Um, kind of close, kind of the same general area. The top, uh, the top up here of Bermuda, kind of borders, um, kind of borders this Saragosso Sea that was over here a little bit to the to the left. Um, to the left of it towards to towards the US. Um so I don't know. I I I think it's close. I think it's close. Now they all travel there. They all travel there. Um Jim says the Bermuda Triangle thing sounds like someone talking shit again. Well maybe because there's a mystery. And uh, Hunter says you asked Claude but you didn't you don't ask Kyle. <laughs> and Kyle says he's not a map guy. Uh, I only know eels. Now, they're saying they go to the Saragossa Sea. They don't go to the Bermuda Triangle. But you know what? Um, they don't know. They don't know. It's not like they followed them and been able to um, been able to find out what happens. Now, they can't figure out how they reproduce either. They've never been able to get them to reproduce. They travel by the magnetic fields of the Earth, and they travel all to this area. They mate in some weird um, ritual somewhere. We don't know how it happens, what happens, but um, they they have male and female organs, but they don't reproduce. I don't know. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but they go here and then the offspring, the eggs or the larva or whatever then float on the currents back to where they came from. And uh, Loco says freshwater eels are tasty. That's the thing. Freshwater eels and saltwater eels all go to the Atlantic Ocean to breed. So there's no, there's no like distinction. I mean, some live in freshwater and then some live in saltwater, but they all go to the central location to mate or whatever happens there. Now, there's a theory out there that 65 million years ago, about the time the dinosaurs disappeared, a big old meteor hit the Earth. And there's some people out there saying, Jim says, how do they know that? Um, how do they know a, a meteor hit the Earth or the dinosaurs disappeared? Or that the the eels go to the Bermuda Triangle, or the Saragossa Sea. I don't know. I think they track them. They uh, I think they got GPS on them. But I think when once they get into um, Rewilder Life says I don't. I'm not sure the lamprey do. I uh, these are uh, the the ones that I, I I only had time to look into the North American and the European freshwater eels that live in the rivers and streams of the United States and Europe. Um, like I said, there's like hundreds of different uh, species of eels. Um, but they go back here. And people are theorizing that a meteor hit the Earth at in the Bermuda Triangle, in that general area of the Atlantic Ocean. Whap! That's where it went. Now, some theorists, or some eel enthusiasts believe that eels are um, are aliens. Some people believe that eels are, what did they say in this? Uh, I have to look up what the word was. Um, that they're aliens or they have mythical properties, that they're, they're magic. Um, Pickle Peace has never seen an eel out west. Uh, and Loco says they have a, have a mating powwow. Uh, yeah, I, it, like, I don't know. They, the scientists can't figure it out. They can't capture them. They can't get them to breed. So they won't breed unless they're in this area. 
And they said that it's too dangerous there to observe them while they're breeding out in the middle of the ocean. I don't know if they go super deep. I don't know if they're in just a rough area. Um, it is what it is. Now, um, from from chat GPT on the web, it, this says a secret, they have a secret reproduction locations. Uh, it says one persistent theory is that eels have a secret undisclosed location where they reproduce. While it is known that they travel to the Saragosso Sea to spawn, the exact details of their spawning process and the specific locations remain largely a mystery, leading to some to speculate about hidden underwater sites or even extra extraterrestrial involvement. Jim says they're cause, calling bullshit. Chris Dixon says they're an alien parasite like a tapeworm and they're laughing at us for eating them. Well, as long as you cook the parasite, it should be all right, right? Um, along the conspiracy theory route, uh, people, some people say that, uh, this is a government cover up. They believe the government and scientific organizations are deliberately withholding information about eels, reproductive habits and migration patterns. They suggest that there may be undiscovered aspects of eels biology that are being kept secret for unknown reasons. Jim says they're saying may or could be because they don't know. They don't know at all for fact. Um, the, the, they also say uh, due to the eels mysterious and poorly understood life cycle, some conspiracy theories propose that eels are not native to earth and may have alien origin. This theory. <laughs> Wait, what is that word? Post-its? I think that theory proposes the eels were brought to Earth by extraterrestrial beings and that their unusual reproductive habits are clue to otherworldly origins. Does that help you out, Jim? Um, Packwood says, I'm 100% sure if I knew the truth about eel breeding, it wouldn't affect my life. Are you so sure, though? What if it proves, what if it proves that there are aliens and that the giants are going to hatch out of the mountains during the next earthquake, Kyle? Jim says, I'm glitching, and that's because we're talking eel conspiracies, and we're on the prefaces of, uh, of, of busting the thing wide open. Hunter has an interesting theory over on Twitch here. He says, it's probably a spawn cloud. You just need to get enough of them together so they can do the cloud. Hmm. Very interesting. Hunter, are you a marine biologist or have you ever pretended to be one? Backwoods says, come and get me, giants. I'll be waiting. Let's. You want to go talk about that theory on TikTok? We can. We can, for sure. Anyway, eels fascinate me. Uh, I've never I've never eaten eel. Uh, Loco said that it's delicious. I've heard that it's really good. I've heard that uh, smoked eel is really good. Um and obviously, Kyle says that the, we send it all to Japan. Um, <laughs> Loco, Loco says that's just like cloud seeding. <laughs> I, I think it's a little different than cloud seeding. Just a little bit. Uh, Hunter says, no, but I have weird kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. You learn, you learn a lot of stuff when you got weird kids. Jim Jim knows all about Jim says the um Jim says the sea was angry that day my friend like an old man trying to send back soup at a deli how does that go um Jim do you regularly send back soup at delis Loco says Korean and Japanese varieties cooked and served with special sauce what kind of special sauce is that from the 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 um spawn cloud <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Kyle's a fan of the eel sushi. Uh, uh, he says it's delicious, and he's just getting off, just getting off shadow ban over on. Um... <laughs> Hunter said, "Hunter said we just discovered why the sea is so salty." <laughs> <laughs> oh no chris dixon brings up a good point kyle uh chris dixon is wondering how kyle knows he's off of shadow man <laughs> right. no 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 um <laughs> all right well I've just been a little bit interested in eels. I thought um, I, I thought that I would I would kind of throw that out to you guys if you want to um, <laughs> look into it further. But uh, yeah, anything that we can't figure out how it mates, where it mates, and uh, and how it reproduces by dissecting it, you would think you could c cut an eel open and go, all right, well. Here's the A part, and here's the B part, and the A part goes in the B part, and then a baby comes out, or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. You think you think that would uh, that would be possible? But uh, for some reason, it's not. So, what's inside the eels? You guys are all saying they're delicious and um, and nutritious and taste fantastic. Um, what are they made of? Backwoods replying to Chris Dixon says, I went from my videos getting a thousand views to 30. Now they're back to a few thousand. Maybe that's because you made shitty videos. I mean, the some of the ones you sent me, I was like, crooked head. Um, oh. Canadian Farm said with the vocabulary word of the day, post it, assume as a fact, put forward as a basis of argument. Hmm. <laughs> Canadian Farm said vocabulary word of the day. Uh, Kyle's wondering if, if we know that stingrays give a live birth. Um, hey, Kyle, did you know that humans give live birth? Chris Dixon. Chris Dixon said, ah, "Maybe my ex was an eel. I could never figure out when or where she made it. Only that she did." <laughs> um, Jim, that that's horrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I know what Seinfeld, but it's just not good um <laughs> oh no all right i'm gonna leave that alone anyway so that's eels um if i find anything else um anything else interesting about eels i'll bring it back to you in a, in a short little segment but i just want to talk about that get you guys uh get you guys exposed to the wild wonders of the of the seas and the rivers and the the uh, fields of golden grain or whatever um other things on my list today uh i was digging in the other day i think it was maybe thursday friday friday must have been friday when i was doing laundry um my rigid Sawzall, reciprocating saw, whatever you want to call it. Sawzall was a uh, was a brand name that's kind of been um, co opted by the general tool, uh, kind of like vice grips and um, and a crescent wrench and all of that. You do realize that vice grips are 
a brand name and Crescent Wrench is a brand name and Sawzall is a um, brand name. So reciprocating saw, my, my, my cordless rigid reciprocating saw. I love this thing. Uh, this is the second one I've owned, not because the first one died. Uh, I actually sold it to, uh, I sold it to somebody when I sold all my tools, when I left the service tech industry, because I had two sets. Um, the first set I bought, um, I've owned a lot of rigid tools. I, um, I always registered them, the warranty for the batteries and the tools. It's fantastic. Unfortunately, the second set, which was a set that we kept in the house at the farm because Corey, Corey was not happy that I had my set of rigid, my, you know, my combo pack. And it was in my, it was in my, um, my work van and it was always covered in fuel and grease and nastiness and stuff like that. Uh, Mike's home says says skill saw, right? Um, so we ended up getting another exact set for Christmas one year from her parents. And I, um, I didn't end up registering that one. It was kind of a, an afterthought. We got it on Christmas morning. It was long days and I didn't have receipt and blah, 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 whatever the stupid reason is. It was my fault. I didn't register them. Well, I sold the, um, I sold the, the set of rigid tools the original one, like I said, with my tools, when I sold my um, all my tools I wasn't taking with me, I sold that set of rigid to the kid that bought them. Yeah, I sold them to the kid that bought them. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Um, the other one has been on the road with us. I, I've used it a ton. I used the Sawzall for quite a while to process our firewood when we were when we were buying firewood at the gas station, like the little bundles, I would use the Sawzall to, to chop it to size for our wood stove. Um, I, I, I use it for a ton of shit. Well, when we were over working on Tim's, Tim's cabin, um, I was cutting some, some rafters and uh, grabbed the Sawzall. And it had been acting kind of funny. And it was probably because I beat the living shit out of it, trying to cut the, cut the, um, cut the um firewood up <coughs> chris dixon says is hammer a brand name because everything is hammer right i think hammer is a a, a generic term <laughs> jim says this show has so many clips so little time sorry sorry um and so I beat the shit out of the saw. Um, it started slipping um, a little at first and then a lot. And then now it's completely stripped out. So I have to assume it's the the gear, the, gri the, the, the drive gear, the drive spindle from looking into it. So I was researching how to take it apart and replace and see if I could replace the part. So what happens is when I pull the trigger, uh, the motor turns, but the um, the spindle does not come in and out. The the shaft, the shaft won't come in and out, guys. My shaft is stuck. Uh, there you go, Jim. Um, so you just pull the trigger and it it, it and the blade doesn't go anywhere. So no good, no good. You can manually move it in and out. You can you can jerk it in and out. Um, if you grab the shaft, uh, but nothing happens. So I want to fix it. Well, I either have to buy a new one or fix it. So I went down the path, uh, YouTube university. I just wanted a, um, I found an exploded diagram. I, I found a, an exploded diagram that more than likely I could take it apart, put it back together. No problem. Uh, I got a parts list. It looks like Hey, you guys still there? Huh. Huh. <laughs> you guys back? Am I back? I don't know what happened. 
Is it a black screen again? All right. Nice. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. All of a sudden, um, all of a sudden it just like went away. It must've been a stream yard glitch or something interesting. Um, anyway, where did I get to? Uh, I was looking at the exploded diagram. Um, uh, K bong says, aren't they pinned? Um, Pickles says I was gone, but the lost logo stayed up. Interesting. Um, aren't those pinned? No, it's um, it's actually. <laughs> Chris Dixon says I can't talk about jerking it. <laughs> From what it looks like in the rigid, um, it looks like a geared, uh, a grooved spindle, and then a um, uh, a gear plate. And the spindle sits down in the gear plate and it drives it. And then there's a counterweight on there that can be shifted on and off for, uh, for orbital. Um, oh, it's John Palmer, John Palmer's fault. Good morning, John Palmer. Thanks for stopping. Says as soon as he came in, I went gone. So have we ever seen John Palmer and me in the same spot at the same time? <laughs> um, so I figure what the fuck I can, I can open up the saw. I can look at it. I can possibly pick up a 20 or $30 part and replace it instead of buying a new saw because I was the dumbass that never uh, followed through, got the receipt and registered it because then I could just take it in and, and get a new one, which would be the ideal situation. <laughs> so I'm watching this video. And um, it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, they look really well made. Uh, the guy was uh, the guy that I found actually did a complete breakdown and and um, and and rebuild. Not quite complete. He didn't take apart the part that I'm going to need to take apart because he said the tolerances were so tight. And I think that I finally just um... <laughs> I finally just. Um wore it down smooth enough so i'm I'm probably gonna have to replace both the both sides of that that gear linkage uh, or how it how it it mates together is what i'm guessing anyway he didn't take it apart that far but i could get a picture of what how it worked how it went together and everything but that's not really the point um of the of the story the thing that that i found interesting so this guy does uh tool breakdown videos it's what he does. He he takes shit apart and puts it back together. He takes all his tools apart and sees how they work and um, kind of sees the materials they use. And um, yeah, it was it was very fascinating. He isn't a super high end professional video guy. He just does it on his workbench and talks through it. And he it's just his opinions. And, and um, it seems like he knows tools pretty well. So I'm watching watching him. Jim says, throw out the extra parts after. Maybe. Maybe. Um, and so I'm watching him, and, he, and he's talking about... He's talking about some of the different technologies that Rigid has rolled out. Um, Rigid has rolled out prior to anybody else. They were the first tool company to and this is where it started um he was the first tool they were the first tool company to roll out orbital reciprocating function in a cordless reciprocating saw so battery operated reciprocating saw they were the first one to give you that option of orbital or straight cut and you know what i'm talking about either it goes like this or it goes like this if you ever used a Sawzall, you know what I'm talking about. So Rigid was the first to roll out this technology. And he got thinking and he got talking um, amongst himself, like just kind of bullshitting and, and rambling on. And he started talking about a few other things that Rigid rolled out. And he said, you know, I've looked into this and I can't get confirmation anywhere. He says, but I have a theory. 
and I I was like, oh, I'll hear your theory, dude. He was he was just talking about it while he was taking apart screws and stuff. So I like had to sit there and watch anyway, unless I wanted to put it on mute. So I'm listening to this guy jabber on, and um, Chris Dixon says I never did under- understand what the orbital is good for. Um, yeah, I don't know either, man. Um, <laughs> I usually have it off. <laughs> Let's just say that. But it was really cool to see how it worked. <laughs> It was really cool. Uh, it, there's like a counterweight on the gear that uh, kind of flips it and makes it go oblong. Uh, but anyway, he started down this the, down this talking about this shit. And he's like, so we've seen Rigid time and time again come out with these new technologies um, before anybody else. The orbital reciprocating saw. I can't remember a couple of the other ones that... Um, some of the other ones that he was talking about, but there are a few different things that he mentioned. I have to go back and look. I, I couldn't watch the whole video again. It was good, but it was not good for a replay. And so he started talking and he says, you know, and I don't know if you guys know this. I I, I knew I had, I, I kind of had this back in the dusty cobwebs of my brain that I've heard this at some point because when he said it, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. But Tektronics Industries, so TTI, better known as TTI, is a company, a big parent company. Let me make sure I said that properly. Um, Tektronic Industries. Tektronic Industries. Now, Tektronic Tektronic Industries, under a licensing agreement with another company that I failed to write down, owns uh, a bunch of different other companies. Coincidentally, um, Tectonic Industries owns Rigid. Um, They also own a pretty other popular tool brand. Um, They also own Milwaukee. Now, if you're not a tool, if you're not a tool fan, if you're if you're not aware of the tool wars, uh, pretty much DeWalt, Milwaukee. They got a bunch of big fans and they go like this. And then there's a bunch of guys that use rigid over here going, man, I just like my tools and they're cheap and they replace them if they fucking break. (laughs) Works good. That was me. I didn't need to dump the money into into the Milwaukee platform for what I was doing. Um, I'm not saying I haven't used Milwaukee tools. I, I love them. They're very quality. Um, they're just a little bit above what I'm willing to dump in. Now that I have to buy a new Sawzall, now that I'm going to build a cabin, eh, I, might, I might think about having to transition into something a little uh, higher end, depending on, on, on the situation. But you got DeWalt, you got Milwaukee. Well, anyway, Tectonic, Tectronic industries owns rigid and milwaukee now this guy says you know everywhere you read everywhere you read says that they're totally separate and the the proof that they use that they're totally separate is that rigid has sold uh, has sued milwaukee rigid has sued milwaukee for uh copyright or uh, or patent infringements excuse me not copyright patent infringements on some of their um some of their um battery technologies things like that so rigid has uh, has sued milwaukee um it, it seems kind of pointless when they're both owned by the same fucking company huh so you got tectonic owns milwaukee and rigid and the guy says they share an R and D department. And so I looked into it. I looked into it, and every source that I could look up, every article I read, every AI said, nope, 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 nope. Tectronic Industries owns them both, but they keep them completely separate. I said, okay. Uh, so I asked the question different. I said, have there ever been technologies that have rolled out in the rigid tool line? that later after being adjusted have been released in the milwaukee tool line oh yeah 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 there's many examples of that 
Wait, what? So this guy theorizes. Jim's wondering if it's Friday. I, I mean, this it, it just, I just, it was on Friday that I was reading about this, but I thought I would bring it to you today. Um, <coughs> so what this is, what, what I, what I, I, I see going on here, and what this guy, this guy also thought, like it popped into my head before uh, he even said it, is pretty sure Tektronic Industries is taking their developmental technologies and maybe not full on, maybe just parts and pieces or, or here and there um, and releasing them in the re in the rigid tools to test them. Um, rigid is really good. hundred uh, percent money back guarantee. Send them the tool. They send you a new one, but guess what? They get the tool back. They get the tool back. They get to tear it open you guys ever see refurbished rigids for sale? Or do they all go back to Tektronic to uh to further R D? Do they do they go back to Tektronic to further R D? Do they do they figure out what's going wrong um with the rigid line, the lower priced, um, uh, the lower price, but for some reason it feels oddly, oddly quality. This guy went on and on and on and on the whole time in the video as he took it apart how quality the tool is how tight the tolerances are how much at attention they paid to, uh, uh, paid to blowing in the the blow molded rubber so that when it went in through the the holes in the the hard plastic cover that it actually ended up being a vibration damper on the inside. So they went the extra mile to make sure the tools were quality, the tools were high end, the 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 materials they use, the tolerances they use. All of this is in line with something that you would probably find in a Milwaukee. I don't know. I mean, if they are fantastic, I'm not like, I'm not like, oh my God, how are they doing this? Mike Sosa said, no, they go back to Milwaukee. <laughs> they go back to Tektronics Industries, Mike. But to deny it, Chris Dixon says, so rigid is Milwaukee's R&D department. And that's what I think. That's what I think. I think they're separate. I think they're separate. I think I think Milwaukee probably or um Rigid probably has some lower end stuff. Um I I I mean probably. But I think a lot of the technologies that they're thinking about rolling out into Milwaukee, why wouldn't you put it into your to your lower end your lower end tool line, your your tool line that um, doesn't have as much of a rabid fan base, doesn't have such a uh, um, such an opposing force with like the Dewalt fan base. Why why wouldn't you protect yourself rolling these things out and testing them in the field and offer free replacement? For stuff that just completely goes sideways, no questions asked. Chris Dixon says it makes sense. Let the consumer do the testing. They're the ones going to wreck it anyway. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And John Palmer says, is that like GM using GMC to test things before using Chevy? Yeah. I mean, I I I think it's fine. I think I think it's definitely something you can take advantage of. I lucked into rigid. I looked and it was a, it was a, um, it was a, it's definitely a circumstance of what I could afford at the time. And I looked into it and people were happy with rigid. They were happy with the quality. They had the lifetime warranty. They had the warranty on batteries, which I'm not, I haven't bought anything new from rigid in quite a while. And I don't know if they still have the battery warranty, but man, who, who, um, who, warranties their batteries 
I always thought that was weird. Is that because they're using cell technology that they they haven't they haven't rolled out in Milwaukee yet? Was that the fuel line when they were testing the 18 volt octane batteries with with rigid? Were they pre-testing the 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 fuel uh, systems for uh, Milwaukee? Pickle P says you can use a sawzall as a hammer, right? You can use anything as a hammer. Episode of Chicago Fire last night that one dumbass was trying to uh, hotwire a uh, a a backhoe, and uh, kid a kid had hotwired it and it said um, or jumped it, I guess, and he bridged he bridged the con the ignition contactor with a screwdriver, and and the guy the paramedic was like, "How did you get it started? There's no key," and he goes, "I, I touched the contactors with that screwdriver over there." And he couldn't reach the screwdriver. And I looked at Corey. I said, well, you can use your finger. It just doesn't feel really good. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Is uh, is it a bad thing? Pickle Pete said a fire axe is called a Polanski. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you all know that there's a difference between a splitting mall and an axe, right? That was something I learned when I moved when I moved to the farm. I I I I feel like I should have known that a long time before that, but um when I went to buy um went to buy uh something to split my firewood with i was i was quickly quickly um subjected to the fact that there were there were way different types of axes and and splitting malls and different uh and th it was a whole different world to me you can go down that rabbit hole if you want sometime um yeah so tti TTI rigid Milwaukee. You can you can dive in yourself. You can definitely dive in yourself. If you're looking to buy new tools, I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't ever shy away from rigid. I've I've talked about it many times. I'm not a um, <laughs> is is the rabbit hole about axes. Chris Dixon was wondering if it's the axe hole. <laughs> Gonna get me shut down again. Um. I've never been uh, I've never been a, a brand whore. I've never been except for my coffee. Um, I don't care what tools you use. If they if they if they get um, if they get the job done, I'm okay with it. I never I never had my rigids fail on the job um, until this saw did. And the saw was because I used it for the wrong purpose. I was using that sawzall as, as a hammer, basically, like Pickle Pete when, and Chris Dixon were saying. I wasn't, um, it was definitely, um, it was definitely not the right situation. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from rigid. I wouldn't shy away from rigid. Pickle Pete or uh, K Box says rigid. Hmm. I don't know. It's affordable. It's affordable. It lasts. I've I've owned so I've owned two sets, uh, two of the the sets of uh, impact drill and sawzall. I've owned the table saw, the portable compact job site table saw. I've owned the chop saw, um, and a couple lights, I believe. Uh, Uh, John Palmer's wondering if a pickle whore is a dill hole. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Depends on what kind of pickle she's eating or using. Um, uh, yeah. The things you learn, the things you learn. Eels, eels mate in private. They go away somewhere where we can't find them and mate. And uh, and rigid might be the the R and D testing line for Milwaukee. None of it confirmed. Who knows? Who knows? 
Um, babies. We got babies. I don't know if I mentioned it yesterday. Corey, Corey has confirmed. We put a video up yesterday of snail babies. Uh, they are freaking tiny, guys. Uh, the video we put up has uh, has one of them next to a quarter. They're tiny, but they come out shell and all. They're they're tiny little. Um, they are tiny little babies, exact replicas of the full grown. Hunter says again, I'm 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 thinking you're talking about babies. We have now confirmed two more egg pouches, eggs egg egg locations in our uh, incubator our uh, our breeder tank um and maybe more because Corey so we cleaned out the the breeder tank or we started transferring the adults from the breeder the breeder tank to the the grow out tank the adult tank on Saturday and she's been diligently looking through the through the breeder tank for adults ever since she found one this morning uh, what that tells us is either it was hiding or it was buried down in the substrate having, hey, Chris Dixon, have a great day. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate it. Um, it was buried in the substrate laying eggs. So we have one pouch of eggs that uh, that is hatched. We found them. We have two more that are in, in process and possibly uh, more. So we're going to have a shitload of snails soon. Shitload. Um, Pickle P says tiny armored ones. The, everything is getting rebranded to tiny armored ones. I bought uh, I bought a domain uh, and I just have to go make sure it's tiny armored ones, not tiny armored one um, before we rebrand. But everything that's Sydney the snail that we can change will be um, rolled out into a, a group dynamic because... Sydney isn't even the best one at this point. Just happens to be the first. Just happens to be the first. So it's uh they're they're fascinating, guys. I'm excited. Uh as of this morning when I checked, we had um 40. I think we're at 40 subscribers over on the YouTubes. Uh let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, I don't know if I switched to the other. God damn it fucking fingers uh yeah i did switch to the other one i think we we're at 40 this morning so we need 10 more uh to go to that live mobile feed on the tank um if you guys want to give me more work to do you're more than welcome to uh, pass that around to share it around and get us to 50 and then away we will go and you'll be keeping Corey up at night because there'll be red light in her room in the tank so Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Red light, red light. It's going to be the red light district in the back of the in the back of the camper here. <laughs> What's going to be making the money? Oh, all right, all right. Let's wrap it up. Um, three after here. We just kind of rambled about uh, eels and tools and snails and things today. I appreciate hanging out. Um, back again tomorrow. It's supposed to be crappy kind of weather off and on today. I'm supposed to go out. I got uh, I got some comfrey roots showing up. I got our uh, portable air conditioner showing up. So I'll be uh, taking that out of the box, getting that, um, get that uh, set up in here, give that a go, see see how that works, and uh, hopefully it works great and better than the RV air conditioner. I'm excited to try it, and the price was affordable. So be doing some Amazon videos about that. Hmm, weird how that comes full circle. So anyway. I appreciate everybody listening. If you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit the like, share, and subscribe. To return value for value, please consider joining one of the YouTube membership tiers or listening on any value for value platforms like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Hit that zap. Hit that uh, hit that tip with lightning tip while you're listening over there on those value for values. I appreciate that. It all adds up in the end. Jim, I appreciate the zaps every day over on Noster. That helps keep that feed, um, feed rolling. And uh, that goes right into my uh, my accumulated um, sap pile for zap.stream, where I'm streaming over on Noster. Uh, 
you can check out the lots project.com where I have all my uh, affiliate links, uh, partner program, partner companies, discount codes and the like, plus a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of more information over there. Comfreyroots.com. We got comfrey roots for sale. This, the month of June, we have uh, a BOGO offer. Just put in coupon code, share the love. You'll get two for one, two for one, two packages, two separately packed packages in one. So you can just hand one off to a friend, neighbor, enemy, whatever, whatever. You can hand it to anybody you want or keep it for yourself. Just enter coupon code share the love at checkout. It will just add it on. It doesn't change the price. It doesn't do anything. It just adds the coupon code and signals to me to send you two. So comfreyroots.com, share it around. It's Tuesday, tasty Tuesday, thirsty Tuesday, taco Tuesday, whatever Tuesday you want. It is what it is. Have a great day, guys, and we will catch up with you tomorrow. Longest night